Hey everybody, Chris State here. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to get your website up and running on NetLiffy. Today, I'm going to actually show you guys how to set up your custom domain that we purchased in a previous episode. If you haven't seen that, it's on my channel. I'll try to post a link somewhere on this video. I don't, I'm not really sure how to put it on the video, but we'll put it on there. What we're going to be doing today is setting up that custom domain. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up NetLiffy here. That's not NetLiffy. <laughs> that was some other development I was doing. But NetLiffy's right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in on this. All right, now that I'm logged in here, this is not the exact same website that we were working on before. This is one of my client websites. I, uh, I went ahead and did this one just because it's more of a complete product, and I'm actually setting up this custom domain so that way they can actually use it now. It's a, it's a live project that my client wants, and I want to get it up and running so you guys can check it out when it's done. I'll show you guys real quick what it looks like. There's just some kind of test data on here but this is their podcast website. You can see here their, their beautiful cat and uh, their, their nice logo for their brunch and brew. It's called Brunch and Brew Podcast. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be actually linking the Google domain uh, purchase dom domain to this NetLiffy. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see down here in the getting started on NetLiffy that our site is deployed. The next thing to do is to set up a custom domain. So I'm going to click on that. What it's going to want here is you to actually add the custom domain. But before we do that, we actually need to set up our DNS records to point to this server. I'm going to go ahead and go to Google and I'm going to type in NetLiffy and I'm going to type in custom domain. This first link here, I'm going to click on it. And you can read through this and kind of understand everything's going on. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to scroll down here to DNS configuration. And down here at the bottom, there's a, there's a point right here. And here's the recommended and here's the alternative. I'm gonna explain what this means. Now a DNS provider, a DNS system, is designed to help you as a user and also you as a developer make your life so much easier. When you go to a website, you don't type in, you know, 192.156.whatever, right? You type in google.com or you type in chrisstate.com or whatever it is, .com, all right? What, we're, what we really wanna stay away from is memorizing all those IP addresses because whether or not you know it, Every time you do type in google.com, it's actually going to an IP address. What actually tells it what that IP address is is called a DNS service or a domain name uh, resolver, right? So basically, when you send it a request, it says google.com. Before, it before it goes to the web and picks it up, it stops at the DNS server, and the DNS server says, hey, I have that IP. I'm going to go ahead and send you where that is. And then when it returns it, it knows where to return it from, right? Now... What, they, what NetLiffy wants you to do here, and this is just my personal preference, they want you to give over the rights of a DNS service to them. Now, is that bad? Are you handing over abilities? Not technically, but I like to keep my DNS settings inside of my domain register, like Google Domains. I like to keep that control in there so that way everything's in one area. All my settings are in one spot because I'm not actually just using only NetLiffy. I might later on want to set up an email hosting service or a subdomain, right? And I want to have all those settings there in Google, Google Domains. Now, that doesn't restrict you from not using NetLiffy. They're not like, if you don't use us, you can't use anybody. What they're saying is saying, that's a recommended, but there's also an alternative. And that's actually using something called an A record to point your domain to their IP address. And you can see that right here, 104.198.14.52. I'm going to go ahead and copy that, and I'm going to go to Google Domains. You can see now here I have uh, our domain settings. And down here at the bottom, you can see that there is actually a custom resource records. This is where you're going to set up your domain settings. Right here, you're going to leave that at the at symbol, and that's fine. But over here, you're going to type in an IPv4 address, which is an address for NetLiffy. After you click add, there it is. You're linked up. But what do we do now? We actually need to add another record, and that's a CNAME record. A CNAME record... I'm not really sure all the ins and outs of it, but essentially this allows you to point resolutions or, for example, a website is www to this address, right? So I'm going to type in www, and then I'm going to type in right here. We're going to go to CNAME, and I'm going to type in for this website, brunchandbrew.com. And you can see right there, oh, I'm sorry, brunchbrew.com. And you can see right there when I click add, it's going to add that in there. See that? Now, if I go back to custom domains, um, I get everything set up. I'm going to go to domain management. I'm going to hit add a custom domain. I'm going to type in brunch 
brew.com and click save. Now what this is going to do is it's going to ping the server and it's going to say, hey, check your DNS configuration. Now, why isn't this just an automatic fix? Why isn't this just automatically working? Well, domain name resolvers don't happen and aren't working right away. They don't just happen instantly. They actually take time to sync it to their servers because there's a lot of servers that are resolving these DNS records. So it might take some time. So what I typically do is I kind of go away for 10 minutes and come back. And then when I click on the domain management eventually, that will be fixed. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna pause the video and we're gonna come back here in a second. All right, so we're back. It's only been about 45 minutes. And I really just refreshed the browser, kind of browse some websites. But you can see here that there's no longer the DNS configuration error setting. We're good to go. If you actually click on this link, you can see that it actually does load the website at brunchbrew.com, which is awesome. And it's set up by default to not only load the www extension, but the regular extension with nothing there. Now there's something that we do need to talk about that's more crucial than even just setting up a custom domain, and that's making your site secure. Typically when your website is transferred or your your server sends a, a signal or a data over a wire or a connection, it typically uses the HTT protocol, the Hypertext Translate, Translate Protocol, or basically the transfer protocol, how it actually sends the data over the line. And typically over for years, it's been secure just because we haven't really had the need or the people that were malicious enough to mess with this. But it's, we've come to a time where this data needs to be encrypted and be safe and secure. And so they added something called the HTTPS protocol, which basically adds security to this. Now, typically, uh, most, most places that you're going to be hosting your website through don't do this for you for free and not automatically. Most website hosts, you know, I used to go through GoDaddy would charge me $80 a year to host this and have just to have security on my website, which really, really sucks because it's 80 bucks for every website I have. That's ridiculous. Now there is a, there is a community or kind of a consortium that is called Let's Encrypt. And Let's Encrypt is essentially, uh, and I'll read it here, it's a free automated and open certificate authority. In order to get a security or make your website secure, you have to have a certificate. And that actually needs to be authorized by an official authority or you know certificate author. And Let's Encrypt is actually a free one. Now, you might think to yourself, I think I've heard of this before, but doesn't it require a lot of extensive knowledge and having to create your own SSH keys? And don't those, don't those, you know, aren't they expired after 90 days? So I have to keep up changing it. And it's just a hassle, isn't it? I don't want to write a custom script to do all that. Well, you don't have to with NetLiffy. NetLiffy is so amazing that it has built Let's Encrypt into its system. You can see it on here. If I scroll down, you have the, S the HTTPS settings. And right here, you can verify your DNS configuration. Now, you see that it's actually saying that, hey, we have access to your website and you're pointing to us. Now you can enable Let's Encrypt. You could, let me real quick back up. You can provide your own certificate if you do want a different one, but Let's Encrypt is awesome. Now I'm gonna hit Provision Certificate, and now it's done, right? So if you type in, if you type in brunchbrew.com, it's gonna be encrypted. Well, no, because you can see right here, it's not secure. Until we add the HTTPS, we won't be secure. Now you can see that we're secure, but how do we force that? How do we cause every user that comes to our site to have that connection? Right here at the bottom is you can actually write force it. You must have ins the certificate installed to force it. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. So that way, oh, actually it just did it for me. You can see right here, it says force HTTPS. I click on that and now it's gonna force it. So on this website where it doesn't have it enabled, I click refresh and now it's secure. Now. Now that our website's secure, what does that mean for us? What is that? Well, first of all, you get that nice, beautiful green connection. But here's something that's even crazier. Domain, or, or, or what would you call it? The web crawlers, you know, the search engines like Google and Yahoo and Bing and all those, right? DuckDuckGo, that one's a good one. They actually are starting to prioritize sites that are secure over ones that aren't because you don't want users going to your site and you don't want to be promoting sites that are getting your users' credit cards stolen and their information hacked. And so these, and I think it's just that these search engines are actually promoting sites that are secure. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's not fair. Why, why do they get it? Why do I have to pay? Well, you don't have to pay. With NetLiffy, it sets it up automatically. It's super safe, secure, and free, and it will renew it every 90 days for you. 
All right, well, hey, everybody, that's it for this video. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys real quick how to set up a custom domain on Netliffy. If you like this video, please leave a comms up, a comms up, a thumbs up. I meant to say leave a comment, but leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, and just tell me in the comments really what you guys want to learn, what you guys want to know next. Even if it's something that I don't know, I'll learn it and teach it to you guys because that's what I love doing. Just put it down in the comments below. Please check out my website, blog.christate.com. Christate.com is also a website, but I typically am posting on my blog more often. Check out my Instagram, instagram.com slash Chris State, and I'll see you guys on the next video.